in four visits to the two-month-old Jojo, I had the impression that something seminal was happening. Jojo is indeed breaking new ground in his assuming way, perhaps not since the Bernardin opened in New Yorkers' eyes to new ways of, of preparing seafood, as the restaurant had as so much potential impact beyond its doors. In only eight weeks, he has succeeded splendidly. Wow! This is from the New York Times. Brian Miller, 1991. I'm uh, Chef Jean-Georges, and I'm the owner of uh, On Chef at Jojo. My first memory of food is really uh, a crushed banana, some orange juice. So sweet sour was in my blood from the beginning of my life. I came to New York in 86, when I was cooking at the Drake Hotel, a restaurant called Lafayette. You know, I was cooking already for 15 years, and it was time for me to open my own place. So with my bicycle, I went around and I saw a sign outside of uh, this building and uh, it says for rent. The owner of the building said to me, uh, the previous owner hasn't paid his rent for nine months. If you give me a, a check of $10,000 tomorrow, it's yours. I made it happen the next day. We opened uh, in April 91. Uh, and it was, uh, there was a line around the block. Jojo is actually my nickname. You know, when I grew up, my brother and sister couldn't pronounce my name, Jean-Georges. So Jojo was uh, my nickname since I was uh, three, four years old. I mean, the, the kitchen is just probably the smallest kitchen in New York City. We have six burners, one oven. So I had to do things more simple. So uh, that was the idea to really do a neighborhood restaurant with uh, simple food that uh, makes you come back. You know, it worked. I feel like we created what they're creating in Brooklyn now. A young chef with, you know, not much budget on really cooking from the soul on uh, what I believe. And it was, at the time, was, uh, I feel it was a kind of a groundbreaking to, uh, I actually even did the, did the wine list. I was a sommelier at the same time. After 10 years, you know, the wear and tear of the restaurant really shows. And it was time to renovate it. The second transformation was a lot of drapes on, uh, you know, like Belle Epoque kind of style. We closed in 2016, November. We were supposed to close for four or five months, but we took a sweet time. And we reopened last uh, December. And then we decided to go back to something a little more, a little more Scandinavian, a little more, uh, you know, really fresh. And well, we changed the entire menu, actually. We did something pretty, I think, clever. Every day we have two specials on the old from the old menu. So people who want the chicken with uh, olives and chickpea fries, every Monday. On Tuesday we have the goat cheese terrine with the uh, potato and then the cod with aromats. So there's something for everyone, you know, they, they know the day they have to come back to uh, if they want a classic. I mean, the experience is totally, it's the old Jojo with a fresher look. It's really a, a modern restaurant for 2000, 2020 and uh, I think the food uh, reflects as well the, that look. I'm still a little, little Jojo, but uh, <laughs> I feel like I've grown up uh, a lot. I'm a grandfather now, and uh, you know, as you get older, I think you you take all the superfluous away. You go to the essential flavor. Today, the focus is really on deliciousness. I want the first bite of the plate to be as exciting as the last bite. You have a bite of something, you remember forever. Jojo is all about memories, and we create some new memories now. It's a legacy. Jojo is a legacy. We have another 15 year lease, so we'll be here for 15 years, and hopefully we, we do a, a fourth renovation in 15 years from now. I'll be 76, but uh, why not? We live only once, so I want to do everything. I think Jojo should be reinvented all the time. <laughs> <laughs>